live. There is no samples, no playbacks. It's audio synthesis that is done in Pascal right, right away. We can even see some strings of notes. Probably, uh, probably that's how computer sees it, <laughs> but we can hear it slightly differently. So here is a. Um, uh, here's what can you do with my library. Uh, it's an ambient piece. I want to show, uh, before we start, I want to show a couple of examples. There's some, something to chill out. You can doze a bit. <laughs> but uh, let's wake up with this next example. There is no evidence without the code. Maybe I can show the code. So, my library C sound expression. Uh, C sound stands for audio programming language. It's audio engine that I use. It's called C sound. Really cool. It's kind of treasure of audio programming. And expression sounds the main idea of my library is that everything is expression and everything everything complicated can build can be built from simpler parts and we can abstract that away and use as a black box. So the next example for you to wake up, I want to have some introduction. So I have kind of keyboard controller and I have, um, I guess, seven instruments, two piano parts, uh, one bass that's always playing. Uh, I have a guitar, it's actually sitar. I have hi-hat, tom-tom uh, -tom drum, uh, bass drum and snare drum. And uh, there are it's QAZ, uh, it's just keyboard. From the, I can change the speed of playback. Uh, first row is equals to one. Um, the last row equals to zero, so it stops. And Z and Y can be min minus one or speed up to EOP is apply pulsing effects to to the to pianos or guitar. So let's wake up <laughs> and hear some music. Start the drums again. 
Haskell in music nowadays, but let me show how it can be done. So, so for me, I don't know how for you, but I do it with fun driving development. It's a kind of new paradigm uh, that I explore with C sound expression. Uh, but uh, what do we do? We what do we want? We actually want to have fun uh, with creating music, but about some some strange. Uh, occurrences we want to do it in Haskell. But what is fun in Haskell? Actually, uh, we need a library that is rich in tools. We have a lot of audio units, but also it has to be easy to grasp, so we want some DS, good DSL for music terms and notation and sound design, and it has to be Haskell friendly and hopefully interactive. So, uh, loop uh, uh, of uh, compute and evaluate should be fast to do music. Um, but what uh, power in my library comes from C sound. C sound is really a treasure. It's 30 years audio programming language and have over a thousand of audio units uh, that are developed by the leading people in the industry. They are all researchers. Actually, it's a very friendly and vibrant community. Uh, the next C sound conference is going to be in Italy. Everybody is Welcome to join in September. Um, actually, it, it can run anywhere because it's C library. You can install it on your toaster and hopefully it will run some music. Actually, on mobile phones, on, in, the, in the browser, everywhere. And not to say about major desktop platform. But there are problems with C sound. Actually, people who do C sound, they are more digital signal processing researchers. They don't care that much about syntax, and syntax doesn't really change, and it looks something like that. Uh, it's kind of imperative, down to the bones. It has global variables for everything, wired for real time. You have kind of... Uh, imagine you have to define array, you give it an integer name, and then in your code you use that integer, that, and it interprets it as array that you have allocated. Wow. Kind of. 21st century. So, um, but we can cure it. Uh, we have um, my library. <laughs> C sound expression, this main idea that we take power of C sound, this really tremendous amount of research was put into it, and we augment it with the power, syntactical power of Haskell. So, uh, but to do it, uh, we not just play. We not just embed syntax of C sound. We have to design some functional model for music. So to use uh, C sound uh, right away, it would be boring. It would just be imperative language in functional dressing. But this is not what we want to do. So here is an example. What does it mean to be a functional model for the music? So here we have bass player, very good one. And what he is doing, he is creating some notes with his heart and his mind. He is converting, um, he is converting the notes to the signal. Signal falls to the I don't know if you know it is a effect processes, and goes to the speakers, and then it hits the reverb, and then we can hear it. So, as a model, we can see it like that. So it starts with his head, with the notes and it goes to the signal, and then a uh, signal for effect processors, heat amplifier, reverb, and we can hear the wonderful music and dance. So, in Haskell, we can write it like that. Uh, here we, you see core uh, types of the library. These, uh, just two things, D and SIG. SIG is a signal. It's, it can be audio control, or it can be audio signal. Uh, D is stands for the constant double, so 
So note is an amplitude of frequencies. There are constants. Guitar uh, converts notes to signals. FX a bunch of effects convert signals and amplifier to also converts signals and room creates from mono signal it creates stereo it's room it's just a kind of room reverb and DIC stands for digital to analog converter um, which uh, just sends audio to speakers <coughs> so and what do we do for this functional model well we just apply functions um, so here's the code it's not C sound expression code yet, but it's really, really close. So the main idea that's a functional model for music, often it's just application of the function given you have the right model for that. But to make it that easy and natural to see, it's kind of take a lot of effort to implement. And, and it's done. <laughs> I hope you would use it after the talk. So, uh, what's going on? In the first four lines, we're creating, we're actually not doing anything. We are accumulating the syntax expressions. Uh, we're creating syntax tree of, for our functional model. And then we convert it to imperative model, and then we render it to C sound code. And this little function, DIC, just uh, converts, just generates C sound code saves it to the file and runs the sound compiler on it and we can see the result. So here is a hello world program. It's kind of is already C sound expression code. It's real code. Um, we create tuning fork so we can tune a violin or voice for it. So it's uh, the this expression creates syntax tree. Um, this one renders it to file and invokes C sound compiler on it. So, like that. So it looks like that. So here's a hello world program. Um, but there is some magic inside, some science to do it. It's in the paper, check it out if you're interested in implementation. Here I'm more for overview of the library. We are creating a lot of common sub-expression elimination, converting syntax tree to DAX. Uh, there is uh, some trickery behind the functional model. You can check it in the paper. So, with uh, C sound comes a lot of units, kind of sounds of them. You will have frequency modulation, granular synthesis, a lot of that. It's look like that. So, OSC square is square wave, triangle wave, sound tooth. If you are using some subtractive synthesis, it just converts signals. Um, actually, in C sound, you cannot even nest functions. Recently, they added it, kind of two years ago. But in Haskell, hopefully we can. Um, so there is many more, and we can use it out of the box. So I'd like to show some real C sound code. It creates harpsichord instrument. Uh, no need to understand it right now. It just creates a harpsichord sound. So this is how code um, looks like. It's pretty dense. Uh, but it's real Haskell code, and it's not samples, and I can show uh, what it sounds like. Actually, now I'm using VDAC. It uh, it uses kind of we have no MIDI keyboard, but we want to play on. <laughs> Just it's kind of ten lines of code and it do something useful. James Kelly, it's original author in C sound. I've just recorded it in Haskell. And uh, in my library, uh, there are many uh, more instruments like that. It's C sound catalog package. It has a lot of instruments ready to be used. For example, we can switch harpsichord for organ. Get 
play. So it goes like this, but I got to. I want to stress out that there is no samples, no anything. It just Haskell code all the down, all the way down, and we can build from primitive something that sounds that good at that is. So, but we have also some fun stuff besides applying functions to make functional model. I think that doesn't always have to be complicated to have something useful. So applying function, functions is okay, no need for time morphism or category theory. I, I, I really would like to stress it because I wanted to save fellow musicians for the, all this mass stuff. But we have something mathematically inspired. We have algebra of nodes. It follows a uh, common approach, um, the pioneer by Paul Hudock is uh, temporal media. We have de delay. A group of nodes, we can stretch them in time, we can play them at the same time, and we can play in sequence. Mel is melody, in sequence, har is for harmony at the same time. So, uh, signatures look like that, score is a score, temp creates single note, rest creates uh, no notes, it just pause. So, deal and stretch, they just stretch and delay group of notes, and harmony and melody group the note. So that's some algebra for the musician. Surprisingly enough, we have same stuff for user interfaces. For user interfaces, an expression can also we use knobs, sliders. We have hor for horizontal alignment of UIs. In the box, we can there are something like knobs, sliders, buttons, and vertical alignment where. So. Um, Sounds simple. So we have space for empty space. K is just scales, uh, make it bigger or smaller with some factor. And we have whore and fair for just grouping the UIs. So, um, okay. So, but it can be, uh, what is a UI? Is a source that outputs some knob controller or something, and some behavior that is value. And it, uh, SE here is kind of IO monad for C sound expression. I cannot use IO because we're just generating the code. We just concatenate, smart way to concatenate strings. So, uh, but uh, effects are implemented in Haskell way, so SE, you can think about side effect as IO monad for C sound expression. So we have visual representation and value. Source is a kind of knob or button. It looks, here's a simple example. You have slider, you have tag name for that, and it outputs a signal what, that um, some user controls. Or we have knob is rotary knob. Signal is a control signal. But in Haskell, we can do it, uh, start in really funny ways, mixing with that ideas. We have uh, applicative style for combining UIs. Uh, lift one, it makes something like fmap for UI sources. Uh, it applies a function to the source and visual representation stays the same. But imagine we have two knobs, something for frequency and something for, this is amplitude and this is frequency. And we have function apply an oscillator. So what H lift does, H is for horizontal, it applies function to both of them and stacks the visuals horizontally. So there is no need to, for some tags or artificial wires for combining UIs. So it's just expression to group the UIs elements. We also have V-lift that stacks visuals vertically. And this can take us pretty far because A is just anything. It can be actually function and signal processor. And I want to show you an example of that. So uh, anyone play guitar? <laughs> so probably many recognize that it's pedal board, very cool stuff. We have chores, delay, overdrive, this chain of effects. So how it can model that? It can look something like that. <laughs> it's kind of C sound expression. Uh, representation, we can turn it on and off. We have some controls and 
signal falls from that. What is more interesting uh, is the code that it takes to implement that. Um, oh, here is the code, this complete working code um, for that. Huh. You have filter, chorus, phaser, reverb, gain, and you have FX4 special grouping combinator that groups, but actually it was built from, uh, from stuff like that, but applied on the deeper level. So uh, the real power of expressions that we can create something um, that seems to be complicated, but we can abstract that away. And we can use it as a black box, and we, with good uh, combinators, we can create uh, musical performances very fast. So, um, here's the code for that. If I have some time, I will run it <laughs> for you. So, um, so uh, the main idea was that everything as expression with simple application can allow us to create really expressive library for the music, for example. But uh, C-Sound Expression, where does it go? Uh, I have some plans for future. Right now it's pretty stable, you could hear the examples, we can make music with that, we can make performances with that. Uh, my plans for the future add VST support so that we can use it in Pro Tools or Ableton Live. Actually C-Sound can be used in that, but I not yet uh, wrote the code for that, but I plan, I really want to do that. Actually, I'd like to make more tutorials to make it more accessible for beginners. Actually, there is a very really good tutorial on GitHub. Uh, and I want to optimize and test internals. There are some bugs. Uh, there are not many of them, but they, they are. And somebody has to fix them. Probably it would be me. <laughs> it's not fun to do, but somebody has to do it. Uh, okay, there is a plan for future. Um, so, applications of the library, uh, besides the uh, trivial application like creating music or live performances, it's, um, we can do some generative art, uh, we can make some DCP or music theory research on that. Um, and actually somebody already doing it, <laughs> some music theory research and making cool drum machines. <laughs> he can uh, speak to Joachim. Um, and we can teach programming with the music, because kids, they're all about that. They want to see some visuals, something moving, or something sounding, and it would be cool to apply something as simple as that to teach the programming under the hood. So maybe they can apply it in some serious stuff. So, thanks for listening. That was my library. It's available on Hackage on GitHub and on SoundCloud. I do lots of music with that, so you can uh, listen and give it a go. See, Sound Catalog is a library where lives a lot of predefined patches and instruments like harpsichord or tone wheel or gun on pads or anything. Oh, well, thanks. Do we have, if you have some time, some time for question, if we have uh, some more time, I will show some, maybe some examples. Okay, any questions? Thanks. Thank you, Anton. Uh, so we have one question on Slido. So are there efforts in evaluating the sound quality to prevent the treble you generated from being too sharp? I don't know, what do you mean by treble? Uh, too many highs? Uh, I, I think that it's, we can apply some equalizations to it, it's just signal processing. Uh, if I use sound cards, the sound quality would be much better. With, uh, with external sound card, you can make it really professional as in Ableton. If you use cheap audio card from the notebook, you get cheap sound. <laughs> Do you have a microphone? You might need to just ask people to speak up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, dovetail with the previous question. So, what happens when you have this thundering herds of sound? 
Is there anything in the library that sort of helps take care of monitoring or, or bringing things into a reasonable realm, or does everything, you know, expanded to an immense noise? Um, For multiple do, instruments, right? Do you mean clipping? Yes. How do you deal with clipping? Yes. Oh, actually, we can just apply scaling. Uh, we can multiply signal by the number, actually, to bring it down. Yeah. Uh, actually, it goes like this. I can show. Please. If I play it, it would be really loud. Yeah. But I can do like this. It's loud the same thing. Yeah. A little loud. Ch Ch louder. It's, wow, it's not that loud. Not super loud. Actually, we can do it even more simple in like that. And even like that, uh, MLP is uh, to show you the power of C sound. MLP is a uh, emulation of real MOOC filter, and it start to sound a little bit. Now I can bring volume up, and we can do like that. You don't hope you don't mind. We go to real mode. U O S C is unipolar O S C, so it's kind of. As flexible as that, we can, signals are instance of num. Okay. So it's just like we can treat them like numbers and go all the way down. It, 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 it can very quickly it can start to be complicated. Actually, uh, one that's one more thing. I, I, you know, this is this sound expected. It always goes like that. That's one more thing, please. Um, I went to Types. <laughs> so here is a custom wrong types. Bloody types. I think it's a typo. Ah. Should be consig instead of consig. Uh, what? Ah, oh, oh yeah. 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 We can speed it up. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm diverging. I'm <laughs> Okay, maybe not. Um, another question. Yeah. One more question from the room. So, um, because it said at the end of the Haskell evaluation you invoke the C sound compiler, yeah. this can be sort of seen as a macro language or metaprogramming? No, it's not. DSL, it's a uh, deep embedding of DSL. Uh, uh, the target language is completely hidden. Yeah. I said to you C sound, but uh, I said to you that it's C sound, but it can be used with all no with no knowledge of C sound. C sound is unnecessary. Just uh, just a name for that. You, you could have like an arbitrary Haskell function, like depend on time. Or something. Um. <laughs> I'm not sure. You can use uh, any Haskell you want. But your your signals are pre-coded. Uh, this is a pre-coded type that will be understood by C sound. You cannot use an arbitrary time-dependent signal defined in Haskell. Uh, of course not. It's, it's just, we have we import the library. We have SIG, and it gives a, it's a notion of signal. Can we see some of the types? Some of the types of Please. where? Uh, good. Um, on the side. Uh, um, <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, some of this. Um, I can do it like that. Um, so some some types. Signal to signal. Yeah. Frequency to audio. Yeah. We are running out of time. So okay. thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you.